Hello and welcome back to A Shot of Wildlife. In today's video, I'm going to tell you almost everything you need to know about the red squirrel. 140 years ago, there was only one species of squirrel in the wild in the UK. It was common and widespread across most of the country, and that is the red squirrel. Unfortunately, that isn't the case anymore. These small rodents are now only found in Scotland, some parts of Wales, patches of Northern England and on the Isle of Wight, although there have been a handful of reintroductions across Southern England in recent years. You might be wondering why their numbers have declined so much and the answer to that question is the grey squirrel. Through no fault of their own, grey squirrels were introduced into the UK in the 1870s. They brought with them a disease which they are immune to but that is fatal to red squirrels and they gradually displaced them across most of the country. Red squirrels are much smaller than greys and measure about 35 centimetres from the tip of their nose to the end of their tails and grow to around 350 grams. They have pale cream undersides with the rest of their fur varying from orangey red to dark brown. During the winter, the fur can become more grey and dull, and they also develop tufts of fur at the top of their ears. Most of them molt these out in the spring, but some do keep their ear tufts throughout the year. In the UK, red squirrels are mostly found in carnivorous evergreen woodlands, but it's thought that that's due to grey squirrels not surviving so well in these places. Historically, they also lived in farmland and deciduous woodlands. They feed on a wide range of seeds, nuts and shoots, and just like other rodents, they are opportunists and will also eat carrion and birds eggs and chicks. They are active throughout the year and spend a lot of the autumn hiding food to return to to eat during the winter. This is where the term squirrelling away comes from. Red squirrels can breed twice per year, usually between February and March and then again between June and July. Females are only receptive of mates for a very short window during each cycle and as they are not territorial, mating can involve several males chasing a female and competing for the chance to father her offspring. She will be pregnant for five to six weeks before giving birth to between three and six young, which are known as kittens or kits. These are furless, blind and teethless, and are hidden within a nest that the female has constructed known as a dray. Drays are usually made out of balls of twigs high in the branches of trees, lined with leaves, moss and wool, although they will sometimes also nest in man-made boxes or hollow trees. Males play no part in rearing the kits, which emerge from their drays around seven weeks old when they are around half the size of adults and look like miniature versions of them. By around 10 weeks, they are fully weaned and independent. There are currently around 160,000 red squirrels left in the UK, but they are also found across most of Europe, some of Russia and in parts of Asia. As I mentioned earlier, they have declined drastically here in recent years, but it is not a lost cause. Pine martins are a native predator which is better at catching grey squirrels than reds and is gradually recolonising the country from the north. As they spread, they seem to be reducing the number of grey squirrels and allowing the red squirrels to recolonise. I know it's not the grey squirrels fault that they are here, but I am hopeful that one day red squirrels will once again be common across most of this country. They have an average lifespan of 4-5 to five years, but one captive animal did survive for more than 15 years at a zoo in Japan. And that's all, but if you want to learn more about squirrels in the UK, then check out this video here with things you need to know about the grey squirrel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.